Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of all, and in this video we're going to have a look at the fastest way of navigating around Blender. So in this video we're going to have a look at how to navigate Blender in various ways, and I'm going to start with what is probably the slowest way, and go all the way up to what I think is now the fastest way of navigating around Blender. You might disagree with me, but mostly I think it's going to be what people are used to, but I do think the last way theoretically should be the quickest because it does require the least amount of hand movement. Now I'm just setting up this scene so it's really nice and easy for us to be able to see what's going on, all I'm doing is duplicating a standard cube, and then I'm poking the face of one side of the cube so that we can tell what direction is which. So in case this is anyone's first look at Blender or in its navigation, let's go through the basics. So to start with, holding down the middle mouse button allows you to orbit around, so moving around to look at different angles. And if you hold shift and the mouse button and then move around, that allows you to pan, basically slide from side to side or up and down. And then finally scrolling the middle mouse button allows you to zoom in and out. You can also press control and hold the middle mouse button down and use up and down to move in and out or to zoom in and out. And that gives you a little bit more fine control there. So that's quite useful. The other thing that becomes very important is this little icon here. And that lets you know what you're seeing or what your view type is. For example, at the moment we are in perspective mode, which means that the object's getting smaller as they're further away. This object looks larger than that object. Obviously they're all the same size, but that's the way they look. Whereas if we click on this, it will change to orthographic mode where these objects are actually all the same size. And because our eyes are so used to seeing this in a perspective view, this is gonna look really weird. These don't actually look the same size, but trust me, the length that is there is exactly the same as the length that is there. If you don't believe me, you can get out a ruler and check, but they will be the same size. So while I'm in this sort of view where I can pan around quite easily or orbit around, I generally prefer this perspective viewpoint. Now, the other thing we might want to do is we want to look at a side perfectly flat on, which makes things a lot easier to edit. Now, this is the part that we're going to focus on mostly in this video, because this is probably the bit that's really important to get right and to be able to do quickly, because you're going to be really regularly flicking in between these different view types. So the first method of doing this is using the gizmo that is in the top right hand corner just here. And this is probably the best thing to start with, because it gives you a very, very clear view of where you're going to be going. Essentially, you just click on one of the axes, dots, and that will tell you where you're going. For example, if you click on minus Y, you're looking front on. If you press on X, you're looking side on. And you can also click on that X again to flip to the other side. And at any point, if you just hold down the middle mouse button, you'll move out of that. The reason this is quite useful to start with is that it shows you where you're gonna be looking. So it's a bit easier to mentally navigate around. And you can tell this because you've got the Y axis being green and you can see you've got a green line on your screen. You've got a red line on your screen. And while you don't have the blue line for the Z axis, that's pretty self-explanatory. So this makes it quite easy to navigate, but it's definitely not the fastest as you need to move yourself all the way over to the side. Getting a little quicker, we can then move on to our number pad. And just as a side note, I will go through some of these, but if you hold your mouse over any of these, it will tell you what the number pad is for this. So you can learn it that way as well. Now this does require a number pad, so you do need a full keyboard for this, but the basics are one is side view, three is front view, seven is top view, and nine is bottom view. Now, once you're in side view, so let's go to one. If you want to see the opposite view of that, you just hold control as you click one. So that will flip you round to the other side. And again, three is side view, and then control will take you to the opposite side. There is a slight oddity here that if you use one, it's the minus Y view. And if you use three, it's the positive X view. Not sure why they went that way, but that's fine. You just need to remember then that control is the opposite. There are some other funky features that you can use with this. For example, if you had a camera set up here, in fact, let's shift an A and I'll bring in a camera. So for example, let's move that there. And then you were to press zero, that will take you to the view of the camera. So that's quite useful if you're going to compose a shot or render something. And I'm just gonna delete that. The other one that's useful is if you're selecting an object and you press full stop or delete, it will take you closer into that object. And the one that I find most useful for them on the number pad is that if you select a face and it's at an odd angle, all you need to do is press shift and seven and it will take you into an orthographic view facing directly onto that face, which means that you can make modifications and see things much more easily for that face view. Whereas if I was to do that from above, we've got a slight angle on this face. So that shift and seven is really helpful.
I will say once you get into that you are in a slightly odd view mode so it helps to then press something like 1 and move out of it. So that's using the number pad. Now that should definitely be faster than using the gizmo once you get used to it. And using the number pad is probably one of my big failings as a Blender artist. I don't use it very much because when I was learning Blender, I was doing it on a tiny laptop and it didn't have a number pad. So if you are learning Blender, it's really worth getting yourself a plug-in keyboard so you're getting this right to begin with. For a lot of other reasons as well, having a keyboard does make life easier and that number pad is essential, especially for doing things like Booleans quickly with ball tools. Now this final method of navigating around, I actually now think is the fastest method, even faster than using the number pad because it doesn't require you taking your hand off the mouse. And I actually found this by accident very recently. I hadn't seen this before. I don't know why it's not talked about a little bit more. And all you do to use this is Alt and then hold down the middle mouse button. And if you just move your mouse, you'll see that it is flipping in the direction opposite to the way that I'm moving. Essentially, if you think about it like you're using your middle mouse and navigating around, normally you drag down to go towards the top. With this Alt middle mouse button and down, you go to the top view. Alt middle mouse button and up, you go to the next view down and so on. And this is really nice. I mean, for me, this is much more intuitive because it means that you're just flipping one to the side. So that's really nice. I find that really helpful. The other thing is that it is going to be a bit faster. My fingers are always over the shift control and alt buttons and I don't have to take my fingers off onto the number pad, look at the numbers and then back. So this for me is gonna be by far and away the fastest method of navigating. I think it's absolutely brilliant and I wish I'd heard about it sooner. Hence doing the video so people know that it's there. So that's it for today's video. Did you know about all those navigation tricks, especially the alt and middle mouse button clicking? As I say, I didn't. It must have been something I totally missed when I was going through Blender. And which method do you think is the fastest? Do you agree that this alt middle mouse button is going to be faster than using the number pad for most things? Or are you going to stick to the number pad because that's what you prefer? Let me know in the comments section and I look forward to seeing you for more Blender tutorials. Have a great day guys.